So the big question when I have explained this whole piece to patients is they're left with like, okay, well, what do I do now? And I really want to emphasize that almost all of this is, is reversible, depending kind of where you are on this scale, but most of this is reversible. So it's not a matter of waiting to hear a doctor give you a diagnosis. Like, I would start addressing this now. So, like, these are the, these are the things that we tell our patients. Is the very first thing is you want to stop having insulin surges. And the American Diabetic Association, I, I don't actually fully agree with what they're recommending. They usually recommend about 120 grams of carbohydrate a day. Now, technical, t technically how, how the research has shown is that the average person, if they weren't broken the way that we have broken our systems, can deal with about 70 to 100 grams a day. Now, what I have people look at is, is whether or not they have carb or sugar cravings. If you have carb or sugar cravings at all, you're eating too many carbohydrates. Now, for some people, they will do fine at you know 70 grams. Some people will do fine at 100 grams. Most people who I see who are coming in, they have much more pronounced blood sugar problems, and they do better with 60 grams. Some people, they do better with 45 grams. It's like where it's going to vary for people depending on how long you've been in you know whatever state you're in. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to start measuring the amount of grams of carbohydrate you have a day. You know, most people come into my office are eating somewhere between 500 and 800 grams of carbohydrates a day. I had a man come in and he was vegetarian. Vegetarians tend to eat a lot of carbohydrates. And he um, had grown up in a Hispanic household and he had, he said, literally, I have thousands of grams a day. Plates of rice, plates of beans, plates of pasta, all those things have carbohydrates in them, huge amounts. And he was coming in because he had metabolic syndrome, and we got his hormones straightened out, and then he was doing great. But you, you know, you want to where your cutoff is is going to be wherever your uh, you stop having um, carbohydrate grams. Base uh, carbo, sorry. Your cutoff is, is going to be wherever you're going to stop having carbohydrate cravings. So that's the first thing you want to measure the amount of grams of carbohydrates that you're having, and you want to cut them down until you stop having cravings at all. The second thing is you want to eat before you're hungry. Now remember when I was talking about your adrenals and how they have to manage your blood sugar each time it comes down and they jump in and they get your blood sugar back up? Okay, well, so one thing that you can kind of help your adrenals to get better is to eat every two to three hours. You want to eat before you're hungry because if you wait until you're hungry, then your adrenals have had to jump in and try to do their job. So what you want to do is eat basically every two to three hours. So this means that you want to make sure that you carry snacks with you. Look, we have a whole program here in my office that's designed to support people in this. So if you have questions, let me know. But the, you know, everything, we have a whole recipe guide in there, all different types of snacks, but you carry some Something with you carry nuts, carry you know peanut butter comes in little packets now. Carry, you know, an apple doesn't have that many grams of carbs. Like do something like that. Carry something with you. Don't allow yourself to get hungry. Um, when you're and when you're looking at the websites and you're counting up your grams of carbs, you know sometimes people we've been really trained to be worried about calories and to be worried about. Um, fat content, and I want to invite you to not be concerned about those. That has not gotten you far at all. Like, people have, it's not a calories in, calories out anymore. Like, people count calories and it makes zero difference. If you have insulin resistance, it makes no difference. So, I want to invite you just to deal with grams of carbohydrates. If you just deal with that, I can almost guarantee you're going to have success with this. So, the first thing is to cut down your grams of carbohydrates until you stop having carb cravings. The second thing is you want to make sure that you're eating every two to three hours, so eating before you get hungry. And the third thing is, is it is helpful to have some exercise. And the reason exercise is, is helpful is it helps a bunch of different things. But in this particular blood sugar model, the reason exercise is helpful is because it actually burns up the glucose and gets rid of the insulin faster than if somebody's just sitting around. Like it gets it out of your system faster so it does less damage. So exercise doesn't have to be that you're, you know, working out heavily for an hour a day, five times a week. It could be that you go walking four times a week for 30 minutes, like something. You want your body moving. I mean, your body is designed to move, and despite the fact that we sit behind computers all day, like, our bodies don't like that. So exercise will definitely make a difference here. Now, athletes do tend to be another group that have a lot of an enormous amount of carbohydrate intake, and they also have, you know, corresponding enormous amount of carbohydrate problems. That's a whole group that I specialize in working with because, you know, I, I've been an athlete too. I've ridden my bike for almost 30 years, and people have always said, oh, you want a carbo load, and then we're eating like energy bars and things with sugar in them and, you know, huge amounts of, of carbohydrates. And the only reason that most athletes are not dealing with insulin resistance or diabetes is simply because they exercise. 
and the exercise is what keeps them, they have hypo, usually re reactive hypoglycemia, but the exercise is what keeps it from moving forward into insulin resistance. So if you can add the exercise in, it does make a really big difference. So in conclusion, what I would like to say is, like, I want to leave you with the fact that this is actually reversible. And it's going to take something. You know, it, it takes looking at your pantry and looking through the foods that you have and, you know, dealing with how your family eats. Like, I have a lot of parents who come in, and they, they really have to deal with the fact that they feed their kids sugar all day. You know, I had a parent who once said to me, like, well, all kids are carboholics. Well, not really. I mean, they were trained this way. You know, they just get trained into eating sweet and then they continue to eat sweet and then they have fits because they don't get sweet and we give them give it to them and so then they just have problems too that's why the childhood obesity is the fastest growing uh, population a segment of the population that has diabetes is because of the amount of sweets that they're eating and we have patients in our, in our office too 12 and 13 year olds who are dealing with fatty liver, liver cirrhosis from pre-diabetic states so, you know, you'll have to deal with a few things, but I can guarantee you a few things also, is that you will have better energy, you will lose weight, you will sleep better, you will look better, you will feel, I mean, you're, you know, so when I talk to people, I'm dealing with their health problems now, but I also want to invite you, like, how is it going to be 20 years from now? Like, how do you want your health to be? Like, this is one of the main things for you to deal with. Once you deal with this, your health is going to start to get a lot clearer, and you will actually have a chance at, you know, not getting any of those big diagnoses later. So if you have any questions about this, my office deals with people all the time, long distance, as well as locally. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. And, uh, and I wish you a lot of good luck, because this is really an epidemic, and I'm really determined to interrupt it. So thanks for listening.